Welcome, everybody. My name is Dr. Adam Ingreo, and this lecture is entitled The Healing Capacity of Honeybees, Veterans Using Beekeeping as a Modality to Achieve Positive Mental Health Outcomes. And really what this lecture is intended to do is to highlight some of the work that we've been doing as part of the Heroes to Hives program to help our military veterans connect deeper with their bees and be able to address some of the fundamental challenges of re-entry into the civilian world and dealing with the traumas of military service um, through connection to honeybees. The practices that we have developed over the course of the last nine years of the Heroes to Hives program have been primarily developed by Lacey and Grayo. Uh, myself and, and Lacey are, the co are both the founders of the Heroes to Hives program, and Lacey's background is primarily in transpersonal psychology with a, with a real specialization in nature-based therapy. And so getting out of yourself to be able to connect deeper with a larger world. And we do that here in the Heroes to Hives program through the practices that I'm going to be talking about uh, in this particular lecture. <clears throat> now, just a little bit of background about the Heroes to Hives program. Uh, the program was established in 2015, and really we developed this program uh, between the two of us be really around the experience that we had with my own personal transition uh, from the military as a uh, service-connected disabled veteran from the U.S. Army. And really what happened over my course of transition was when I got out of the military, I really was just kind of struggling. You know, I had, I had not intended, I had intended on retiring from the military. And so there was really never a plan B. And so it really, like a lot of folks that leave the military, it's kind of like falling off of a cliff and figuring out what that next mission is, is really difficult sometimes. And for me, what ended up happening is when I used my GI Bill uh, to go back to school, um, I was attending Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Uh, doing a plant science degree, and I took a beekeeping as an elective. And really what my wife and I saw through that period of experience with beekeeping was that there was a tremendous transformation in myself as an individual. Um, and that's really why we started the Heroes to Hives program. And I'll talk a little bit more about those experiences that we see within, uh, within beekeeping that are very therapeutic. But the program itself, it's a nine-month uh, beekeeping education program for service members and their dependents. And we really teach them. I, I teach the course like a college-level beekeeping course. It is a very in-depth course, lots of detail. And um, to date, we've had over 10,000 students that have gone through the course uh, since 2015 with participants in all U.S. states, territories, and active duty participants, many active duty participants that are stationed overseas as well. And to do the Heroes to Hives program, it does take a community uh, to pull that off. These are the partners that that allow us to um, really be successful with with the Heroes to Hives program and provide both online and on ground training. Um, everyone from universities like the University of Missouri Extension, um, Michigan State, Purdue, University of Minnesota, all the way through a lot of nonprofits that we work with directly, uh, like the uh, Veterans Farm of North Carolina, uh, the VFW. Um, and also big federal agencies like the uh, the VA as well are major partners of the Heroes to Hives program. So a lot of folks that are involved in this. And really what we've been doing with all of this involvement is that we've really been trying to hone in on developing not only a very robust beekeeping education course that sets these individuals up for success as professional beekeepers, but also giving them the tools to take control of their own health. And that's where these transpersonal practices around beekeeping really get in. Now, when we think of transpersonal in, in, in the sense of beekeeping, what we're talking about is really working beyond the limits of personal identity and to, to really engage in a much deeper way with our bees. So really getting outside of our own person and really focusing on this connection between ourselves and this organism that we are trying to develop a relationship with. And I think that's one of the things that we really try to focus on within the Heroes to Highest program is not the understanding that we are, you know, that, that these bees mean nothing and that we can just replace them, but rather that this is a deep relationship between us and our bees. And we're we are working collectively together in this to create the outcomes that we want. And those outcomes can be something like pollination or honey, but it can also be something much deeper that's healing for us as well, I believe, for our bees. 
when we're talking about kind of what what we mean by this transpersonal interaction with bees, we're talking about really kind of taking on some qualities and kind of rethinking how we think about relationships. So when we're working with honeybees, what we're kind of trying to, to instill in folks is that there is this there's service that in, inherently goes in with working with honeybees. So we're serving one another. And within this service between one another, both us and our bees, there has to be the recognition of this generosity that both of us are providing. So being very generous with each other, providing things like that care that's necessary for honeybees because they are a managed organism, just like all of our other livestock. And so there has to be this inherent care. We need to understand each other and we need to provide a recognition of the gratitude for one another. And so developing a relationship with one another through gratitude practices is something that we'll talk about here in just a bit. Re re uh, refining our awareness. Really, one of the things I think that's so incredible about honeybees and the interaction with individuals and honeybees is a lot of a lot of individuals that that get into beekeeping are completely removed from agriculture, meaning they they're generations removed from the farm. And so, when you don't have this this kind of inherent connection to agriculture, a lot of times we really aren't uh, we aren't as aware of nature as as we really think we are. So, you know, for example. Farmers have to be have to be aware of weather like nobody's business. They have to be really conscious of what's going on with their livestock, what's going on with their plants, how those organisms interact with their landscape, and how they interact with climate as well. And so these individuals are very aware of natural cycles. And that's something that as humans, we have gotten very removed from. And so what we're talking about when we're talking about kind of refining this awareness, we're talking about refining the awareness of the connection with the natural world and the natural cycles. And that's where some of this interaction with honeybees can, can really take shape and really support ourselves in kind of getting outside of ourselves and starting to think about the bigger world, the bigger ecosystem. One of the things I love about folks that get into beekeeping is once they start paying attention to bees, once they start paying attention to weather cycles, their entire understanding and acknowledgement of the natural world shifts completely. And I have seen this with thousands of students that go through our program, is that it just takes a little bit of refining that awareness of what's going on around you and using an organism to build that conduit, to build that awareness, we use bees. Cultivating wisdom, really, I think one of the things that one of the things that really stands out for me when we're working with veterans is that we as a society invest so much. And, and I'm not just, I'm talking about I'm talking about tax dollars, I'm talking about energy, resources. We invest so much into our military personnel. And these individuals that are that are trained to be leaders, and when I mean leaders, I mean leading people into battle where life and death is the consequence. Literally training individuals to be the best leaders in the world. And oftentimes we forget about that as a public when these individuals leave the military. Cultivating wisdom around beekeeping is not only an opportunity to develop connection, but it's also an opportunity to develop empowerment within our military service members. These individuals have been trained to be leaders. We just need to give them a new tool set to be able to be the leaders that they naturally are and that we as a, as a country have trained them to be. Give them the tools to go out and be those leaders. And by training them in beekeeping through our program, that's something that we really focus on. But cultivating that wisdom is kind of a two-pronged thing. It's not only developing this inner connection, but it's also developing a sense of empowerment within the individual. Redirecting motivations. As military personnel, we are self-motivated individuals. I can definitely tell you that. And the motivation that we oftentimes can get from a military unit is quite incredible, you know, to be able to accomplish things that oftentimes seem impossible as a unit. And so redirecting the motivation that we have to something that's really productive, because when we leave the military, a lot of times we don't, we've lost that direction and it's hard to find that self-motivation. And so finding something that we can redirect and find some motivation around the care of honeybees, the care of our, of our nation's food security, which is primarily what we're doing now is, as, as folks that are beekeeping is protecting food security in this nation. And so redirecting that motivation to something positive, something that we can get behind again, a mission that really speaks to us. And 
you know, I, I'll speak for myself and, and maybe, you know, some of the veterans that I've worked with in the past, but I know for myself, the one thing that beekeeping offered me when I got out of the military was it offered me the opportunity to continue serving. Just because I was non-deployable and the Army couldn't use me anymore did not mean I was done serving my nation. And I wanted and needed that purpose. And so having that ability to redirect that motivation to something positive within the civilian sector is very important and something that we'll talk about through these practices. And then finally, transforming emotions. You know, really when we're talking about connecting deeper it's it's really an exploration of emotions and being able to understand that there are things that are greater around us there's things that that we can connect with in a more meaningful way even when we're feeling really lonely and like the world doesn't understand what we've been through there are opportunities to transform those emotions into something productive and using bees to do that is something that we'll talk a little bit about here in just a moment so let's give a little historical context to all of what I'm going to be talking about here today Really, there are kind of three traditions that we have looked to to kind of develop and explore the practices that I'm going to be discussing with you today. So Egyptian traditions. Um, ancient Egypt is really where beekeeping as, an, as a human activity actually began. We have lots of historical records of wild collection of, of, uh, of, of honey uh, from bees that goes back um, 15,000 years. But really when it comes down to the actual human activity of caring for bees and managing them like we do currently, that began in ancient Egypt is where this tradition began. And the really the story behind bees in ancient Egypt was essentially that they were a gift from the gods. The, tr the story is, is that bees came from the tears of Ra, the sun god, and, the tear and Ra uh, uh, wept down upon the land, and from those tears came the bees. And so bees, when we think about them in ancient Egypt and how they were revered in ancient Egypt, these organisms were highly revered, so much so that the pharaohs of Lower Egypt and all dynasties of Lower Egypt when you see a hieroglyph of pharaohs that controlled Lower Egypt, there is always a bee in the hieroglyph because the bees of, or excuse me, the pharaohs of Lower Egypt were considered bee kings. This is how important bees were in this culture, and they were seen as something that was unlike many other organisms because of this connection to the gods and this ability to produce this sweet nectar that was literally a gift from the gods, and so. And, and, and I should say, not just viewed as a food source, but mostly as medicine. And so that's really where we get kind of this, this notion that bees have much more value than just, a, you know, just how we view organisms in general that are non-human in the world. Very, very important. And, and that there's traditions, human traditions, that support that. When we move into kind of the, Celt, uh, the Celtic traditions of beekeeping, we see that the Celts actually viewed bees as intermediaries between the world of the living and the world of the dead. And you see this picture here at the bottom right. This is the widow by Charles Napier Hemi. And this is essentially a widow telling her bees that the, the, her husband, the beekeeper, has passed. And really, when, when it comes to Celtic traditions, this was actually how you, you actually, as a beekeeper and as someone who, who, who was a part of a family of beekeepers, when someone passed in those families, you went and you told the bees, and the bees were essentially would guide those individuals into the spirit world. And with these bees, the communication between them and the notification with them, if you weren't notifying your bees of these major events in the family, you also could expect that your bees wouldn't be as productive. And so there was a there was a consequence for not engaging your bees as part of the family and utilizing them in the ways that they were they were essentially meant to be in these in this uh, culture, which was as intermediaries between the world of the living and the world of the dead. And so having the ability to communicate with this organism as a way of almost um, providing yourself with some personal therapy, being able to to voice these traumatic events is something that has, has a lot of historical ref, uh, relevance within the beekeeping uh, realm. And then Slovenian traditions, and this is this is really through uh, you know the last 150 years into current Slovenian traditions around bees. 
And bees in Slovenia are seen as healers. And really, you see this picture here at the bottom left. This is inside of a bee house. And what you can see here, I'm going to grab my cursor, and you see these boxes here down below. These are actually Aja hives, um, so AZ hives that are the traditional Slovenian hive. This individual is laying upon this, this mat on top of the hives. This provides her with the vibrational frequency coming from the bees themselves. And then you see at the end of this kind of, of thing that she's laying on, you have this, uh, this apparatus here, which is basically allows you to inhale the odors of the hive, which are said to have very good uh, healing qualities for respiratory uh, problems. And so this is a therapeutic activity that is being used today and, and utilized as actually engaging bees within our own healthcare. And that's really kind of where we kind of bring this all together is this tradition of reverence, the, the tradition of reverence, inclusion, and then utilization within our own health as humans. So we're really bringing bees kind of, we're just really bridging this connection with these organisms to build something deeper between the two of us so that we both have the benefits of working with one another. I truly believe that beekeepers, beekeepers that are, that are really good at what they do and have bees that survive from year to year and really, really view these organisms as something really important and really special, those types of beekeepers, I really believe, are, are experiencing benefits, uh, health benefits, that are far surpassing what we completely kind of realize as animal therapy in general. That there are a lot of health benefits that just go outside the opportunity to work with an animal. And when we think about things like the Slovenian traditions, there are actually measurable health, positive health outcomes that go along with that. Now, what we're going to be talking about here for the rest of this talk is really the practices that we've developed to help with mental health <clears throat> and kind of personal health in general. And so the transpersonal practices that we provide as part of the Heroes to Hives program, basically the what we do within the program, the program, it, it, the way it works is they get a module once a month, an educational module once a month. And within most of those modules, within the seven modules, uh, uh, seven of the nine modules, they get a wellness practice. And so the wellness practice basically allows them to kind of drop in and have a practice that they can employ and have instruction on how to do um, right within their own apiary. One of the things I think that we need to think about when we're, especially when we're talking about mental health and service members, is that um, a lot of times folks really struggle with mental health professionals that don't have shared experience. Being through hell on earth, which many of our men and women that had been on deployments uh, have experienced, and coming back home and trying to communicate and feel like you're being heard by someone who has never had that kind of trauma, it's sometimes hard to get past when it comes to working with a mental health professional. And so a lot of times, you know, when we think of VA healthcare, not all veterans seek healthcare through the VA. And so some folks are, are uncomfortable with going into those four walls. Some folks are very uncomfortable with potential diagnoses that may limit their ability to do things as a civilian. And so a lot of times they're looking for, for opportunities to capture and help their own mental health through something completely out of the norm. And oftentimes when we're trying to seek those alternatives, they can sometimes be destructive. But other times, if we can provide a framework of practices that can support something as simple as being able to connect with an organism like honeybees to help with your own mental health, that's something I believe that we should all be thinking. And so let's talk about the, these practices that we've developed as part of the Heroes to Hives program, which these students are able to employ in their own personal practice. You know, they basically can go out to their own bee yard and employ these practices to kind of help themselves get through some of the, the traumas of life, some of the struggles of life. So the, the practices that we have are breathwork and movement, and I'm going to go through each one of these, um, so I'll just kind of name them off here. So breathwork and movement is something that we focus on right in the beginning. Then we get into crossing a threshold and rites of passage and what that kind of means in the context of bees. We'll have a practice called communing with the bees, which is very similar to what I spoke about, which is um, with the uh, Celtic traditions. Apotherapy, bee bathing, active meditation, and steps of gratitude. All right, so let's first talk about 
and these is, this is in the order that we, we provide them as well. So let's first talk about the first practice, which, which is breath work and movement. This is a, this, in our course, this is two videos um, that we provide. One that's on simple breath practice, like actually how to properly breathe as a meditative practice. And then a movement practice, which is essentially kind of, you can think about it as kind of yoga for beekeepers. So what movements, what kind of stretching can we do to prepare ourselves for going into the apiary? So both a kind of, uh, both kind of physical ways to really drop in. Now, when we're talking about the ability to like actually have a regulated breath um, that you're using to, to really kind of drop into a practice like this, what we're talking about is a breath practice that's going to help you decrease the, um, the kind of nervousness of your nervous system. So being able to kind of level things out, helping with regulating emotions. So, you know, we, we all know the practice, like 10 deep breaths, right? You get triggered, take 10 deep breaths. We're using these breath practices to really kind of be able to kind of regulate emotions, just like you would think about that, except we're being conscious of this while we're working in the apiary. So this is always in the context of working in an apiary or getting ready to work in an apiary. Through these practices, we're helping with things like anxiety, decreasing some stress, and really providing some mental clarity. So the way that we work with this is that we talk about using breath work and the idea of being able to enter an apiary. So you've had a tough day, you know, you got to go work your bees. You don't want to carry all of this stuff with you into the bee yard because it, the bees are going to be able to tell when you're when you're upset. You're moving too fast. You're not paying attention. You're crushing bees. You're just frustrated. The bees are going to know. And so being able to take this moment and employ this as part of your own personal beekeeping practice to be a good beekeeper, drop in and take that moment to take a few breaths before we step into the apiary maybe take a few stretches as well to kind of loosen your body up and prepare yourself for this activity. A way to kind of clear things out of your mind, kind of settle down a little bit before we enter that space. So these practices really are kind of intended for that. Now, we always come back to the breathing practice. The, the movement practice is something that we, we say definitely you want to employ as you go into an apiary to kind of loosen yourself up. You're going to be lifting heavy boxes, things like that. The breathwork practice is something we come back to a lot throughout the uh, the rest of these practices because it's kind of a core practice that you're going to employ as you're working through things and being able to stay really mindful of what's going on at the time that you're working your bees. The next practice that we bring into the mix is crossing a threshold and rites of passage. And really what this is intended to do is kind of set the stage for actually moving into the apiary. So when we're thinking about how we develop this more intentional practice with bees, one really easy way to do that is to recognize these two things, threshold and rites of passage. So let's talk about rites of passage first. So rites of passage are, are things in our lives where we kind of move from one, one kind of uh, role and enter another. And so, you know, most of us are, are very experienced with, with many of these types of ceremonies that go around rites of passage. So like a graduation ceremony, you graduate with a degree, you graduate from high school, you're now a high school graduate, you're no longer just a high school student, right? So you, you kind of, you've passed, you've gone through this rite of passage, you've done all this work to get to this point, you've passed all your stuff, and now you've got this diploma, and boom, you're moving on. Same thing with weddings, you know, there's a lot of ceremony around weddings, you're essentially becoming, one is becoming two kind of thing. Basic training in the military is a really great example of rites of passage, and the military is riddled with rites of passage. Everything from being pinned to getting a, moving to a new unit to crossing certain areas of the world, there is ceremony and, and a celebration around all of these things. And these are rites of passage. Like when you pass basic training in the, in the army, like you go from being a prospective soldier to an actual army soldier um, at that point. And that's a really important thing. And so you've gone from, you know, turning it from a civilian to a soldier um, at that point. So these rites of passage, they allow us to really mark these really important stages in our lives. And so that's really what we're kind of recognizing here within beekeeping. And what we can do is we can use that opportunity where we're entering the apiary to kind of do kind of a rite of passage around that. When we think about beekeeping in general, really the main rite of passage is, I think, when your bees survive for the first time. Most people really struggle with survival with honeybees, especially year to year. 
And when your bees start surviving at high rates, you know, when your overwintering losses are less than 15% annually, that's something that's really big. And in my opinion, now you are a beekeeper. You're a real beekeeper um, at that point. And that's a fantastic feeling and, again, a rite of passage. And so when we enter the apiary, we can kind of do the same thing. You know, creating a, a situation where we're kind of celebrating or marking that important movement from one area to another. Now, the way that we do that is through a threshold. And when we think about a threshold, I'm actually talking about a physical threshold, like something, whether it's a marker in your apiary, whether it's a fence line, whether it's a very decorative uh, altar or something that you put there for your bees, whatever that is. What we can do in these situations is develop a physical threshold that we cross into as we go into our apiary. And what that does is when we're working with our bees as a, as a normal practice, it gives us a physical place that marks when we are going to actually acknowledge that we're moving from just our day-to-day -day lives into the apiary to work with our bees. And that is an intentional thing. Creating an opportunity to slow down, take a few breaths, acknowledge where you are and what you plan on doing with these bees, and then taking a moment to move over that space and acknowledge that now you are working with your bees and you should be present with your bees, practicing mindfulness by being with your bees in the apiary. All of this is connected here. That physical threshold really allows us to mark that as we're moving into the apiary. Now, the next practice that we, we work with our students on is communing with the bees. And this is the, the, Celt, the kind of behind the whole idea with the Celtic traditions, with the bees as messengers. Really, what we encourage our students to do is to speak your truth, do your telling. And this can be struggles and triumphs. It can be transitions. It could be messages to your ancestors, to your family, to folks you feel connected to, to your battle buddies that you lost. It can be just a quiet connection, too, where you just allow yourself to listen to the bees. So what this really is, is the opportunity to speak and talk about the things that are plaguing you. A lot of the times, especially with military personnel, a lot of folks feel really uncomfortable about talking about the things that they've seen and done. It takes a lot to get past those experiences and being able to vocalize those to a stranger or even a therapist is sometimes insurmountable. But when you have a private space like your bees and you start to feel connection with them and build connection with them, what that allows you to do is open up in a really safe space. Bees aren't going to judge you. They're there to listen. And being able to kind of tell your story in that kind of a safe space by yourself, but with a, a whole bunch of, of individual bees there with you, buzzing away, flying around you. These are opportunities to really get through some of that stuff. So. This is a pure practice of speaking your truth with your bees, whatever that is. Struggles in daily life, struggles in transition. Maybe you did something great and you want to share it with somebody. Getting away from this feeling of loneliness and feeling like there's something more out there that you're part of can also be really powerful in this particular practice. Apotherapy. So apitherapy really is the utilization of bee products like venom, aromatics, the vibration of bees, honey, propolis, all as therapeutic uh, activities and products. Now, what this is, and, and really a lot of, primarily most of the research that's been done around all of the therapeutics of bees is really from Eastern Europe. And we, so we don't see it on a lot of U.S. journals. But there's a ton of information out there on these practices. And really what we're looking at is we're empowering these individuals to support their own personal health. One of the things that I really struggle with as a veteran is, especially being a disabled veteran, is being saddled with a disability that you've just got to deal with all the time. And having 
any kind of sense that I can kind of take control of that that disability at points in my life, any kind of opportunity to do that makes me feel really good. So with the arthritis and the issues that I deal with in in my ankle and knee as a result of my ankle injury, really using bee stings to deal with some of that stuff is very helpful for me. And so this is something that we talk about within the course is this opportunity to maybe take some control of some of your own health issues with bee stings. Now, what this allows you to do, and then this isn't just stings, I'm also talking about the smells and the vibration as well of these bees. So just being with your bees and, and kind of sitting with your bees and, and really absorbing a lot of what's around you. Um, really what this does is not only does it provide us with some what of a sense of being able to deal with some of our own stuff on our own, but it also provides us with this idea of a reciprocal relationship and that there is care for one another, right? So one of the things I think that a, a lot of folks deal with in, in, you know, not just veterans, but a lot of folks dealing with mental health issues is loneliness, is this feeling like nobody cares. And when you fought for your country, when you've, you've been willing to lay your life down, you've seen your friends lay their lives down, and you come home and you feel like you're all alone because nobody can understand Boy, that's a really dangerous place to be. And loneliness is, is a huge issue within the veterans community. And so feeling like there's something else that cares about you, whether it's a human or not, let it be a horse, let it be a dog, let it be a bee. But allowing yourself to, to have a reciprocal relationship of care for one another is really important. You care for the bees as a beekeeper. And they care for you as well. They don't just provide you with food. But they also provide you with healing, the opportunity to take control of some of your own health. And that's, that's a really powerful message to folks and, and something that's tangible with honeybees. Bee bathing. This is another practice that really is rooted in a lot of the Eastern traditions of forest bathing. So really what this is, is just an immersive activity. It's immersing yourself in the landscape and becoming part of this landscape as an observer. So what we're encouraging folks to do is to basically sit in your bee landscape. So maybe you have a, a planting uh, of something like this example right here is, is my partner Lacey sitting in a Takani buckwheat field. This is a pink buckwheat that we grow here on our farm. And this is a buckwheat from the Himalayas. It's, it's a beautiful buckwheat to, to view. You can see a field of, of red stems and, and uh, pink flowers. But what we encourage folks to do is sit in these landscapes and just see what's going on. Be quiet and just observe. And what you'll see when you're engaging in this practice and employing breathing to go along with it is this opportunity to really kind of really be focused and mindful of what's going on. Being in the present moment because of the observation activity that you're incorporating with this. And it's not just for honeybees. You can see there's a bumblebee here on this picture, but all insects and observing what their behaviors are, what they're doing, what their, what their movements are, and the sounds of those particular insects. What are the sounds that you're hearing? What are the things that are, that are really catching your eye in this, in this practice? And it's, it's, it's very immersive. And I'll, you know, this is really something that I think that, you know, we, we bring from kind of the forest bathing background, but as an entomologist myself, when I was in graduate school, this is something that we actually, I actually did as part of research was sitting and observing insects for periods of time to see what they were doing as far as interactions with one another. And it was mostly predator interactions with, with uh, prey insects, which is what I was watching. And what I found was when I was in those moments of sitting there, and these were timed observations. So when I was sitting there and observing for 10 minutes, uh, a single plant and all the insect activity that was going on, you find yourself so in the moment that there's the things that, you know, you were thinking about or that's been plaguing you, you know, things about the past, things about the future that are stressing you out, they all go away because you are so immersed in, in this environment. So something really nice to be able to do, just drop in. And this is something you can do in any environment um, as an individual and really is a nice practice to employ. One of the, as we build through these practices, I think one of the, the main ones that I, I really enjoy is when we get to this active meditation while working a beehive. This is a very immersive practice, and it's where we take kind of all of the ideas of 
working slow, having good hive handling skills, but also very careful recognition of how important the bees are to us and, and the acknowledgement of being respectful to them as we work through beehives. This is where this all kind of comes into play. And so what this is, is that we have a practice where we literally walk individuals through opening a beehive, moving through a beehive, petting your bees, smelling the odors coming from the hive, listening to the sounds coming from the hive, and doing this all very intentionally, very slow, and, and using really kind of an, an observation of what the bees are doing as well in response to how we're moving. And what this really does is it's not just um, you know developing a practice and patience with your bees and really this idea of being able to be mindful, but it also is really providing individuals with skills that actually are very important within beekeeping. The tactile skills of being able to move slow and touch bees without squishing them and, 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 and getting stung because of that, that improves your hive handling skills. Being able to smell the odors of a healthy beehive and know exactly what that smells like in comparison to things that are played with EFB, like European fowl brood, American fowl brood, which have very distinct odors that go along with them, or what a, what a, uh, what a dead out smells like after after, after a winter, these are these are tangible skills that can be employed in your regular beekeeping activities because you've taken the time to slow it down and, and essentially smell the bees, right? Or, or observe the bees in a really intentional manner. This is a really nice practice. This is kind of the practice I like to employ when I'm really struggling in a day because with some of the other practices, the mind is always trying to wander. But with, with this one in particular, there is there is consequence that goes along with not doing this properly. When you move too fast, the bees are going to let you know because they're going to they're going to go right for you. And so there is a consequence that goes along with this practice. And for me personally, that really forces me to be present when I'm when I'm having a, a rough day. And so if I just open a beehive and start working through it, like through this type of a practice, a mindful, uh, a, an active meditative kind of mindful practice while working in bees. That beehive, that is something that is really powerful and really can drop you into kind of getting away from what's plaguing you. All right. And the last practice that I'm going to talk about is the steps of gratitude practice. This particular practice really is this ability to, for us to kind of get outside of ourselves by recognizing all that the world gives us around us. Um, the natural world is an amazing place and really feeds so many areas of humans um, that, you know, I oftentimes struggle with the, the disconnect that we have with the natural world. And let me use myself as an example. Um, I grew up right outside of Los Angeles, about 60 miles outside of Los Angeles, and in an agricultural community that's now basically an area of L.A. sprawl. and Really growing up, even though I was so close to a metropolitan area, I had access to nature. But as I got older, I kept moving into more metropolitan areas and essentially found myself at one point um, living in an area that was, you know, I mean, nature, so to speak, is around in, in preserves and refuges. But you were living in concrete jungles, essentially. And this disconnect from nature really, I think, provided a lot of strain in my own personal life. And the ability to get back to nature and understand what it provides to us is a really powerful healing mechanism. But taking it a step further and actually voicing the gratitude and recognizing and, and, under, and, and actually taking the effort to understand what you're actually grateful for in these environments builds a connection that is 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 quite honestly uh, can be quite incredible for individuals and when it comes to honeybees this is a really powerful practice because bees give us a lot in the way of care they give us a lot in the way of, of products they give us a lot in the way of food with a third of our food being you know insect uh, pollination being responsible for so it's it's an incredibly generous organism and showing your gratitude is is a great great way to build connection so being grateful, it allows us to connect with things greater than ourselves. The increase, it really what this does, it, 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 there's a lot of research around this. And some of the things that we see from providing these gratitude practices and, and what we talk about is kind of steps of gratitude. So walking through your apiary and while you're walking, doing this intentional slow walk where you're breathing and thinking about the things that you're grateful for that your bees are providing you with. 
So what this allows you to do is this allows you to really, you know, increase these positive emotions that you that you have because you're constantly recognizing what these things around you are providing you. Another thing that really is is amazing from these gratitude practices is actual improvements in health, like measurable improvements of health just by getting outside of yourself and recognizing all of the amazing things that the world gives us. It helps, it helps us build stronger relationships, especially with organisms, whether it be plants or animals. And, and by animals, I mean bees as well. And also helps us deal with adversity in many other respects. When we're dealing with these practices and recognizing that there is so much around us to be grateful for, it can really shift these emotions and really allow us to kind of feel much more positive about what's around us. When we're feeling really down and like nothing is is helping us, really trying to shift that mindset can be difficult. But simple practices like this can be a way to get there and, and steps to get there. Is through gratitude. The practices that we provide to our students, they really are rooted in a connection with the natural world. And so when we're talking about these kind of connections, especially for, for military service members, these cycles of nature, being able to slow down that split second decision making process that you have in the military that's oftentimes life or death, being able to slow that down to some of the more natural cycles of nature, like the seasons, things like that. That is a really great way, not only to connect with the natural world, but just kind of slow things down a little bit with that decision-making process. Stewardship. I think one of the most amazing things that I see from our students that come through the Heroes to Highest program is this feeling of empowerment and wanting to be stewards of beekeeping, of the honeybees, and protect them and be able to see them thrive and support them in the way that they're, they're utilized within our agricultural system. Um, but also utilizing them as basically contemporaries that we care uh, for each other with. So really developing a very close relationship through stewardship. In addition, gratitude. I mean, like I said, the gratitude practices and being able to recognize the, the amazing things that the world around us, the gifts all around us that the world gives us, um, is an amazing way to build connection to other organisms and get outside of ourselves. Develop, developing really that interconnection is what we're all about and seeing the world beyond the self is what we're really trying to get to with all of this. It is really hard sometimes to get out of our own heads and get past our own egos and developing practices that connect us with something larger than ourselves is one of the ways to really do that. All right, so I'm going to wrap up today with talking just about a little bit of the research that we've been doing around this. So the practices that we're talking about today are practices that we are working with the VA uh, on. And what we're been, we've been partners with the VA since 2019, and we've been conducting research basically to support beekeeping and evidence-based therapy for veterans. Um, this has been a project that's been going on now for the last three years. We're working with them to basically publish uh, data in a peer-reviewed journal uh, to help establish beekeeping as an actual evidence-based therapy. There is nothing in the academic literature that says that beekeeping is going to save a veteran, solve PTSD, help with traumatic brain injury, none of that. There is none of that in the literature. And what we are doing is working with the VA and have been for many years to actually develop that data set to show that, that, that in actuality, Beekeeping can be a therapy to help veterans with things like loneliness, anxiety, depression, and suicide. Um, we also are developing standard operating procedures to help train VA staff. And that's a project that we're working on for the next three years with the VA is actually developing the SOPs for these practices, the tools to teach the VA personnel how to employ these practices in a VA setting, and all of the, the, the SOPs related to actually having bees on VA facilities. So there's a lot of things that go along with, with uh, not only just doing the research, showing that this, this type of work actually has an impact on veterans, but also developing all of the things to actually implement them in a VA setting. And so we've been working with them, uh, like I said, for many years and will be for the next three, at least on the next grant cycle that we're on with them uh, to get this information out. So you'll be seeing more information about these practices as they continue to get de developed and refined over the next several years. I'll wrap up today just by saying uh, if you're a veteran or service member, meaning active duty, National Guard, reservist, 
Um, if you've worn the, uh, the uniform of the U.S. Uh, Armed Services, uh, the Heroes Hives program is a program that you can participate in for free. And registration for the program is from November 1st to February 28th of every single year. Uh, service members, like I'd mentioned, can participate and up to three of their dependents. And uh, the dependents have to be with a participating veteran. We don't just allow dependents to participate in the course. Um, they're signed up under a participating veteran. We also allow Gold Star family members. So if you're a Gold Star family member and lost a, a service member in combat, um, you are welcome to join our program as well. And then surviving spouses of U.S. veterans as well. And the program is for U.S. veterans only. Um, the If you're interested in registering, you can register at heroestohives.com during uh, the November 1 to February 28th uh, season. And if you want to learn more information about the program, you can go to heroestohives.org, which is our program website. If you're interested in learning more about this program, you can also contact me, adam at myths.org. And I'll say thank you from the Heroes to Hives program and our parent organization, Michigan Food and Farming Systems. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.